are tuned into Black Hollywood Live, the world's first digital broadcast network devoted entirely to urban entertainment and pop culture. Tune in right now. What's up, Leland Band? Welcome to Black Hollywood Live's The Trend. I'm Dario Kristen, and I got my girl Courtney Stewart joining us today. Hey, what's going what's on, up? y'all? I'm doing good, man. Going? I'm still trying to get used to all these interviews via Zoom. You know what I mean? Like, it's so weird. I'm so used to being in the studio and being able to talk to people face to face. Oh, see, you know, you know, have interview. a glass of wine with them while we do the interview. But now it's like, you know, I got my water, my wine, and my fridge. But, you know, like, I, 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 can't, I can't interact the same way. Wait, you mean to tell me you don't have any wine right, wine right now? You mean no, to tell me you don't, don't have any wine I don't right, now. right now? See, I can only drink Friday through Sundays. I'm, I'm getting my summer vibe together. So my oh, okay, that's good. That's I good. Can, that's I can drink Monday through Thursday, but Friday through Sunday it's on. As you should, because hopefully things will be back open by the summertime, man. I mean, come on, they can't shut down summer on us. We need that. <laughs> We need Listen, summer. Something, summer you know? Shoot, that hot girl summer just messed up everything. That's what happened. <laughs> hot girl summer sent the COVID in, and now we're over here. We can't even have summer no more, man. It's <laughs> crazy. Well, I need well, to Well, regardless, that. regardless of that we can't <laughs> see each other, at least we can do this Zoom. So we're happy to have you in, in, uh, in the house today, man. You've been doing big things, been Appreciate watching Boomerang, been a fan, you know, for a while, when even the original movie to down to the TV show. So, mm-hmm. man, just kind of watching what you're doing. And, you know, this quarantine is all crazy. But what have you been doing to kind of pass the time in between? Oh, man, just trying to uh, stay active. Like like you're talking about getting your summer body ready, you know. So even though the gyms are shut down, I've been in the parks. You know, I literally just came from a park uh, running some steps, you know, trying to keep myself fit and, and, and creative at the same time. Been, you know, dibbling, dabbling in, in some writing and creating and things of that nature. And, um you know, just trying to keep my mind sharp. Also, just just studying, reading, uh, catching up on all the shows. I mean, I'm Netflixed out at this particular point. I don't know, I know that's how right. many yeah. YouTube videos I can watch at this particular <laughs> point. I mean, you know, <laughs> it's just a, a monotony of just material, and I don't even know what day it is, man. To be honest with you. <laughs> That's what we're saying. All the days are the same right now. It's like, man, you talking about Friday through Sunday not drinking. I'm like, is it Sunday right now? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it was Sunday to me, shoot. That's why I'm over here drinking. <laughs> well, it's funny at the top when we first intro you in, you mentioned that uh, you mentioned you were listening to what Teddy Riley or Babyface. Have you been catching up on that battle? Well, oh man, the, I'm, I don't know was... if I can really call it a battle. No, battle. no, that was just that was just a legendary showcase right there. That was that's just a showcase. Greatest. Yes, yeah. Yeah, I mean, who, who, how can you say who wins that? I mean, just the, those hits like are, are top of the charts on both levels. You know what I mean? So with that one, we won. That's who won, really. To be honest. <laughs> but I was tuning in for all of it. I mean, my man came out there with the jumpsuit. The, you know. <laughs> he had the wardrobe change and everything. <laughs> Teddy, I can't hear you. Teddy, Teddy, Teddy. Teddy. I can't. Yeah. <laughs> and Teddy's over here like. <laughs> I always started to think that was part of Teddy's little game against Babyface to throw Babyface off. Man, I think so. It had to be. He's, my man was like, hey, start over, start over, start over. Hey, start over, start over. <laughs> and then he came out with a wardrobe change. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> came out with some hammer pants. Like, what right, some hammer pants. <laughs> so, man, listen, I, you, got, you have such an interesting background to me, um, which I definitely can relate to with a lot of things. You came from a finance background and then moved mm-hmm. into entertainment. So yep. you used to work, you start off kind of at Merle Lynch and then mm-hmm. moved your way into acting, which, you know, I feel like probably is one of the smartest moves because if you don't know how to do your finances in this business, it doesn't matter how famous you get, you, you got to know how to control your money. You know what I mean? Very, very true. So, very so how true. did that voyage kind of, how did that transition kind of take place from you going from finance into acting? You know, it's interesting, man, because it, it, there's this formula that they give you when, when, you, when you're growing up to where it's like, these are the steps that you take in order to enter into society. You know what I mean? The high school uh, diploma, the college degree, and then whatever you get your degree in, you're supposed to go into the corporate America job. That was, you know, at least the, the, the thinking back when I was coming out of school, you know what I mean? And um, I got a business degree, so it makes sense for me to, to get a job in the business field. And, um, you know, Merrill Lynch was the first opportunity that presented itself to me. Actually, before that, though, I was I was in insurance because uh, I came out of school actually around the time when uh, the 2008 crisis hit. Uh, so no, they weren't giving out jobs at that particular point. And, um, you know, I became an insurance salesman through Mutual of Omaha and uh, started working with different uh, independent financial advisors. And uh, then Merrill Lynch actually gave me a job with them. And, and that was like my entry into 
becoming a financial advisor. At, that was the ultimate goal. But I started going to that cubicle job every day, and I was like, wait. <laughs> This is my, about to be my life. <laughs> yeah. I don't, yep. I don't know about all that, man. And, and it was crazy because um, it was just a, a fluke type of thing. I remember going to, to church with my mom one Sunday and, uh, you know, these girls were kind of eyeing me. So, you know, they walked up to me afterwards. I'm thinking, you know, it's about to be something crazy. And it, it really like, hey, we just want you to, um, you know, be in our fashion show. And I was like, oh, okay, well, dope. I mean, that seems like it's going to be cool. And, you know, I did the fashion show and, like, I got all this attention and love. And I was kind of like, man, I like this, you know. I might got a future in, in something like this. So I remember um, I went to lunch one day. Uh, and right next door to the uh, spot that I was going to lunch, it was like a storefront right in the, the window. It just said casting. I knew it had something to do with modeling and acting and all that type of stuff. So I went in and the lady was like, look, I can start giving you lessons. And I uh, started going back for lessons. And I just caught that bug, you know, yeah. big time. After you caught the bug, though, what gave you the courage to actually make the leap to like, yep. I can turn this into an actual career? Well, um, actually, it was the first big gig that I did. Um, it's funny how life works itself out sometimes. Uh, you know, I, I remember like the, the first little gig that I did was like a, a short in, in Philadelphia. And it was like we were doing I was playing this drug dealer and, and, and the people on the street were actually getting confused. So where they were coming up and actually asking for drugs to the for the dudes that were like playing uh playing the the, the background or whatnot because they were the actual drug dealers on the block and I was like man I don't know if I actually want to do this but um fast forward to a couple months later I remember uh auditioning in DC for a project called Alaska Land and um uh the director Chinonye Chuku um actually she um she's the director of this the film called Clemency um that's out right now um major, but she, yeah. yeah major it's film major film yeah. yeah, yeah, she. But that was actually the first director that I worked with um, in, a, in a real acting capacity. Uh, I booked the film with her uh, on Alaska Land, and I like three weeks later, I'm out in Alaska shooting this particular film, and um, I loved it. I, I fell in love with it for real, for real, because it was like I'm going out here getting paid to work, uh, you know, having these these this amazing experience out in Alaska, seeing the Northern Lights, and 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 it really just, you know, that was really what caused me to say, you know what, I, I, I want to make this my career for real. And then at that point, uh, Bank of America bought Merrill Lynch. So I was able to transfer out to New York. Uh, so I started working nights in New York. And during the day, I would audition uh, audition in New York and do different projects during the day. And that was the beginning of the hustle. You know, I was, I was sold at that particular point. It was only a matter of time before I quit my nine to five and became a full-time actor. I was just sold, you know, after that particular film. Yeah, I had a similar background. I feel like it's one of those things where it's like it's meant to be when it happens that way because not everybody gets to be able to have that transition and do it, you know, and do right, the, fulfill their right, dreams right. and go after their dreams, you know, they're stuck. So kudos Absolutely. to you, man. And now, Thank listen, you, were you the only brother in Alaska? Um, <laughs> no, we came, it was a whole group of us. It was a whole bunch of black people. It, it was, it was, <laughs> you know, Chinonye, she's Nigerian. So it, it was about, um, you know, it, the lead actors were actually Nigerian. So it was a whole gang of us that came up in there, you know? So we was, we was, <laughs> we was the only ones though, but I wasn't the only one, you know? We, we came, we came pretty deep that time. <laughs> <laughs> now let's, let's, let's talk Boomerang, man. So this, yeah. the series, second season, everybody loves it. In fact, you know, you got a hundred percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Did you know that? That is crazy. No, I didn't 100%. know that. I was looking it up today. Wow. I was like, wow, 100 percent. Rotten Tomatoes doesn't give nobody 100%. Yeah, that's kind of crazy, man. They loving us, huh? Jeez. And they're loving your character, Ari. So for the people who haven't seen the show or maybe just kind of tuning in, tell us about the premise, because I know it takes place 26 years after the original film, which was in 1992. There it is, 26 years after the uh, original film. Uh, it picks up actually with the, uh, the, the kids of uh, Eddie Murphy and Holly Berry's character. Um, you know, Simone Graham, played by Tatana Jackson, um, is actually the daughter of uh, Eddie Murphy and Holly Berry, and it picks up basically with with her group of friends. Um, you know, twenty six years later, uh, and, and it's kind of a, a continuation of the story. You know, it's not the story, um, but it is like we we called it when we first got on it. We called it the Black Friends. You know, um, <laughs> basically it was it's it's a story of six millennials and our struggles and 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 life journey. You know, at in the first season. It was centered more so around Simone and Bryson, but as you're seeing in the second season, we're getting deep into um, the other characters. Uh, Ari has, you know, a, a shared episode with Bryson. Uh, you know, next week's episode, you'll see RJ, you'll see uh, David's uh, journey. And last week, you saw Brit, uh, Crystal go to Paris. Um, so you're seeing our individual stories uh, in this particular season, uh, uh, 
you know, as we as we kind of branch off into our own our own lives, you know, in in this thing. But um, yeah, it's like the continuation of it. We started off with a lot of the you know similar things from the uh, the first the original boomerang. Like you know the the first the first scene I was in was rowing on the rowers. You know with Remember David Allen Greer, Martin Lawrence, and Eddie Murphy, you know, rowing on those rowers or what have you. Um, so we recreated some elements of it to bring, um, you know, bring back a little bit of nostalgia, but the series is totally different, you know. Um, yeah, so we, we, we took our, I put our own little spin on things, but, you know, little elements and, and Easter eggs here and there. Who was your favorite? Oh, go ahead, Go ahead. No, go ahead, Cody. That's all good. So I was gonna roll back to your character specifically. Um, upon like getting the role, was everything for Ari already like on the page for you? Because it's a very unique character that we don't see often from a black man. And it, yeah. a very masculine, bisexual man, free and proud. And did all of that, did that, is that sort of what you brought to the script or to that character? Or was that already there for you? And you just worked oh, it, it was, it was there for you. It was there, it was already there. Um, you know, Lena, Dime, they already had crafted a character. Um, you know, it was, it, they knew exactly who that character was going to be before I even stepped in the room to audition for it. They just, when, when I auditioned for it, they saw me in that role, you know, but, um, you know, especially during the first season, the first season. That everything was, uh, they, 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 they laid everything out. They wanted us to say what was on that page. You know, the second season, we had a little more room for improvisation and everything like that. So I brought a little bit more of myself to, to the table, you know, as far as the funny was concerned and, you know, different lines and things of that nature. But, um, you know, that, that character was already crafted. You know, I, I brought my, my essence to it, you know, but uh, as far as the words and, and the actions, man, that was all already scripted. Well, it has quickly become a, a fan favorite on the show. So obviously you bring, even though it was written on, on, on paper, as Courtney was mentioning, you know, you brought your element and your flavor to it. What do you think Absolutely. it is about you that, that fans have just fallen in love with? Uh, I, I think I bring a relatability um, to the screen. You know, I, I think um, a lot of people, especially with that, with that character as well, uh, the things she says are, are agreeable with a lot of people. And, um, you know, I just... I don't know, I just feel like people like me, you know what I mean? Um, <laughs> um, I'm, I'm, bringing, I'm bringing my element to it and, and I'm, I'm seeing the, the social media responses, the, the black Twitter, Twitter, you know, Instagram, and uh, people are, are, are really engaged with, with Ari. And I think, uh, you know, Ari speaks to a, a, a dynamic, speaks to a people that I feel like are underrepresented, to be honest with you. Yeah. You know, um, I've heard people say a lot that the B is silent, LGBT, you know, Q community. And um, it's kind of cool to see that representation you know, a lot of people are, are saying, you know, Ari's my life and, and, and uh, mm. you know, I, I, I identify with Ari, you know what I mean? I, a lot of people hit me up talking about Ari is me and all that type of stuff. So I, I love the fact that, um, you know, Ari gets to speak to a, a facet of the millennials that are underrepresented in a way, you know, yeah. and um, the fact that, you know, he's so he's so engaging and relatable. I think, uh, you know, people really gravitate towards him. Yeah, it's definitely a powerful character to have on TV right now, for sure. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. And then Lena Waithe and Holly Berry are the executive producers. Yep. Do you get a lot of uh, interaction with my future baby mama, Holly Berry, or is it just sort of, uh, you know. Your future she, baby mama, man. Future Listen, baby mama. Look, <laughs> she don't know about it yet, but you know, no. um, you know, we working on it after the uh, after COVID-19. Man, you know, listen, Holly Berry must be made out of some bionic stuff if she's gonna still have a baby at this point in life, man. <laughs> 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 like, Jesus Christ, bro, what are you trying to put her through, man? Like, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> what are you trying to do to her? Like, you know what, listen, I'm okay okay with being a stepdad to her two kids. Okay, okay, thank we you, can, We can you share. Try, you trying to kill my EP right now, mama, man. We good, we good. Man, I, we love, good. I love Holly, man. Uh, interacting with both of them is great. You know, just the fact that Holly, you know, put her name on it and, and allowed us to, to run with it. You know, um, she, she said on live the other day with Lena that, um, she was she was interested in coming on for season three. I mean, I hope that I hope that really does happen, man. That I do too. Absolutely amazing. You know, to have uh, especially a member of the original cast and, and her at that, oh, be amazing. But um, you know, and, and and Lena just just uh, watching her work and and just the way that she's she cares for her people. You know what I mean? Like it, it's really once you work with Lena Waif, you're part of her tribe, and, and you you're just taken care of. You know, Lena Lena takes care of her actors. Um, you know, she's there for whatever advice or help we may need. You know, she's she's all about it, and and she presents like 
just an atmosphere of, you know, just feel, you feel welcome. You know, like the, the, those particular sets, it was, uh, it was, it was a great feel. It was just a great mood. It, it wasn't pressure. It was, we, we flowed and that's why everything kind of, it came out the way that it did. So we'd be getting those hundred percents on Rotten Tomatoes because, you know, it starts from the top and, uh, she, she gives us that, that, that atmosphere and that flow that just makes everything easy. What's been one of your favorite episodes that you've filmed so far? Oh, actually, my favorite episode to film is the next one coming up next week. Uh, episode seven, as a matter of fact, we're doing an hour long, April 29th, uh, starting at 10. Uh, we, we're going for a whole hour, uh, episode seven and eight. Um, and uh, episode seven was actually my favorite, uh, my favorite episode to, to film. Because I got to I got to put on the, the, the robe of the clergyman and actually get behind the pulpit and preach. <laughs> and uh, it's it's a very very funny monologue, man. I'm, I'm it, I, I don't want to spoil it too much, but I, I'm up there and I'm I'm giving the word of the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. <laughs> yeah. So that that right there was, and, and that and uh, actually, as a matter of fact, episode two, I can't I can't forget the, the cheater segment, the uh, Jezebels when I got to act like Joey Greco. Oh man, that was so <laughs> fun. We got the bus in there with, uh, you know, and, and, and see that that whole that whole sex scene break it up, and, and Bryce is pushing on him, and I'm talking crazy into the camera. That was fun. That was hilarious. Well, yeah, I know you're wrapping up season two. It only has a couple more episodes left. With season three, what would you like to see your character? If you could write something, what would you like to see your character go in season three? Um. Honestly, you know, I would like to see the, the professional development uh, of my character. I see there's a, like throughout there's there's a little bit of a maturation of my character. Um, so I'd like to see where the professional element of my character goes into and, and just the, his his maturation as a man. I, I, you know, we're, we're dealing with his toxic masculinity, which is in, in this particular season, which is, um, you know, a bit of your, your, your childhood ways and your, your old ways of thinking falling off of you. So now that the old ways of thinking are falling off of him, I'd like to see how he progresses as, as a mature individual, you know? Well, we're excited, man, to see uh, the remaining episodes and, and see kind of where your career goes, man, because you're doing big things and we're, we're happy to have you on yeah. BHL today. Thank you, thank you for sure. You know, just looking forward to, to, to keep on giving you guys good content and, and being able to, to share my gifts with you and the world, you know, I, I love what I do. And then I know that, you know, we're obviously in this uh, crazy quarantine time period, but what's one of the first things that you want to do when we're able to break out? Break out. Yeah, first of all, all right, so the first thing when we're able yeah. to break out, to be honest with you, I'm gonna let y'all go first. Y'all can have it, all right? So, <laughs> hey, let me tell hey, you I y'all. say the same thing. Yeah, I the same thing. yeah, you know what I'm saying? I've been quarantined for years, man. Look, I'll go ahead and kick back on my books. I'm straight. Y'all go ahead and do that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But to be honest with you, man, I just want to get back on set. I just want to get back on a set. Like, I cannot wait to work. And that's like, that's what I live for. You know what I mean? That's that's what I do. To be honest with you, I'm I'm, I'm more of an introverted person. I'm, I'm more of a homebody. I want to get back. I want to get back to a set. I want to get back to work. I want to get back to the movies, you know what I mean? To the TV shows and all that good stuff. Because for me, that's that's fun. I mean, I get to wear so many different faces and put on so many different characters. I mean, you know, that's better than the club to me, to be honest with you. I feel you. I feel you. Yeah. I'm lame. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, listen, that's not lame at all. That's smart. See, that's, that's, that's that finance background. That's smart. You know, come on now. <laughs> Look at my 401k all day. Absolutely. <laughs> And outside of this show, I know you got a couple other projects. I know you were on uh, Cherish the Day on yep. Home. And yep. I got a couple of things coming up. What what type of things outside of this are you also working on in the future? Well, um, you know, right before everything kind of shut down, uh, I, I did a, a full commercial campaign with OnStar and Alexa uh, for uh, a few different uh, brands of, uh, of cars. Um, you know, but then all the car dealerships kind of shut down and stuff. So I'm hoping that when those car dealerships come back, uh, you'll be able to see my face on the screen again, um, and and then start start running those. Um, but after that, I mean, literally, right, boomerang hit, and all everything kind of shut down. So once everything gets back up and running, we'll we'll recalibrate and uh, you know see what those next steps are. To be honest, cool, man. Well, we are happy to have you once again. Where can fans find you on social media if they want to see the next updates about boomerang? Tweet you some things. Get inspired. No 
So <laughs> my I'm, my handle is Leland B. Martin on everything. You can catch me, Leland B. Martin, L-E-L-A-N-D-B-M-A-R-T-I-N, uh, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, listen, I'm not doing TikTok. Don't ask me. That's <laughs> why, why not, man? Why, why uh, no TikTok? Listen, why not TikTok? Hi. Because, I, first of all, did you, did you see how hard it was for me to figure out how to make the faces do what they're <laughs> supposed to do? I gave up. So, look, I, this is not my forte. <laughs> Catch me on Instagram. <laughs> Catch me on Twitter. Because, <laughs> man, I think uh, I'm aging out. I'm, I'm aging out of this technological age right now. <laughs> I feel you. I feel you. I feel you. Courtney, mm -hmm. where can fans find you? Always at Stuart Starlet on Instagram and Twitter. And you can find me at Dario Kristen on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all that fun stuff. And Leland, we'll be watching you on BET for the remaining of the season two of Boomerang. And then uh, we'll, yeah. I'm sure we'll, you'll give us some nuggets a little bit later on season three once uh, everything is back to normal. Absolutely. Absolutely. It'd be my pleasure. And it's been my pleasure. All right. Well, we'll talk to you soon, man. And uh, come back to the studio anytime. Absolutely. Well, I should say, come to the studio. Cause we're not there right now. Next time. Yeah, <laughs> next time. Yeah, next I, time. I understood. I, I got what you meant. You, you know, know what I'm saying? Saying. I, was, I was with you. I was on. He was with me. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, y'all. <laughs> All right. Yep. On behalf of our BHL staff, we would like to thank you for tuning in to Black Hollywood Live, the world's first digital broadcast network devoted entirely to urban entertainment and pop culture. Check out our Black Hollywood Live YouTube page for even more great programming and amazing content. And be sure to subscribe and like our channel when you do. I'm your BHL host, Nakia Monet, and you can find me on all social media at Kiki Boom Boom or at Black Hollywood Live. Black Hollywood Live, Hollywood redefined. <laughs>